Good morning, friends. I'm Miss Kate at the Gale Library in Newton, and today it is Hat Day. We are going to be reading some stories about hats and singing a song and reading a few poems. So I hope that you'd like to go put on your favorite hat and join me. Today I'm going to start with Happy Birthday, Madame Chapeau by Andrea Beatty and illustrated by David Roberts. Happy Birthday, Madame Chapeau. In a three-story house with a shop down below, live the world's finest hat maker, Madame Chapeau. Like the lady herself, all her hats were refined, brilliantly singular, one of a kind. Each feather, each bauble, each beard, bead, and each bow, painstakingly chosen by Madame Chapeau. From promptly at eight till exactly at four, the hatless but hopeful arrived at her door. Each person was special, each one of a kind, and perfectly matched to the hat she designed. She made hats for all, from young to the old, and each left her boutique a sight to behold. Then climbing the stairs with her dog and her cat, the lonely, shy hat maker took off her hat. A silver, sliver of gouda, a plum, and a scone. The lady chapeau ate her dinner alone. Just one night a year, on her birthday no less, the lady unpacked her most elegant dress, the one with the frills and the frou-frou upon it. And last but not least, she chose her best birthday bonnet. She strolled through the streets in her elegant gown, to dine all alone in the best place in town. Just two blocks away from Shea Snooty Patoot, the lady chapeau stubbed her toe on a root. She took a great tumble and flipped head to toe. Her fine birthday bonnet was seized by a crow. My hat, my hat, come back with my hat. You simply can't steal someone's bonnet like that. Someone's quite special once, someone quite special once made that for me. You can't steal my hat and fly off to a tree. Madame, said the baker, please take my tall hat. Oh, thank you, but truly, I couldn't do that. What would you wear on top of your head while baking your biscuits, your scones, and your bread? No, no, kind monsieur. Someone made that for you. For me to run off with it simply won't do. Where Avenue Rouge became Rue Tippy Tap, she met a pol policeman who held out his cap. Al alas, said madame, though I do love the look. You'll need your fine hat when you capture a crook. Take man, said the cowboy, in the Stetson, of course. But how could she take it? It matched his black horse. A Scotsman, a jockey, a mime, and a spy, each offered the lady a new hat to try. She said no to a derby and no to a fez, and no to a, the sombrero of Senor Cortez. Each hat that she saw was a pitch-perfect fit for the kind, lovely soul who was perfect for it. She knew that each hat with its feathers or fur was made for someone who was simply not her. A very old merchant on Rue Pompadour, the, with only one hat on the shelves in his store, said, take this small present. I think it's just right. Shyly, she smiled, but the hat was too tight. She blushed a bright pink from her toe to her head. Thank you, it's lovely, Madame Chapeau said. She walked through the town on the long winding route that came to an end at Shea Snooty Patoot. 
She wanted to go home and might have gone too, but the cake had been paid for. What else could she do? She sat down to dine, feeling hatless and blue. The restaurant was crowded and fussy and loud. The fancy pants waiters brought dishes and bowed. The plates were a picture, the souffle a sight. The hatless hat maker could not touch a bite. She sat at her elegant table and sighed. She looked out the window and quite nearly cried. Excuse me, madame, said a girl dressed in plaid. I made you a gift from some yarn that I had. I made it myself and I wanted to say, I hope you enjoy it and happy birthday. The girl held a brightly knit cap in her hand with thin purple stripes and a wide orange band. Its ear flaps were yellow, its pom pom was green. A freakier headpiece had never been seen. It looks rather odd, said the lady chapeau. This hat has no bubbles, no beads, and no bow. It's stretchy, it's cozy, it's easy to squish. It's knitted with love and your best birthday wish. How wonderfully perfect the right hat for me, a true birthday bonnet. I'm sure you'll agree. I thank you so much and I thank all of you. So join me for dinner and chocolate cake too. They feasted on jatto and sorbet with fruit and danced through the night at Shea Snooty Patoot. Then Madame Chapeau wore her birthday hat home and never again did she dine all alone. Look at those fun hats that they're wearing. How very exciting. So in that story, we saw lots of different kinds of hats. And you may see different kinds of hats when you're out on the street. And I have a little poem about different kinds of hats that different people wear. Hats on police officers, starchy and blue. Hats on firefighters, shiny and new. Hats on marchers in a band. Hats on astronauts when they land. Hats on farmers made of straw. Hats on artists when they draw. Hats on kids out in the sun. Hats on almost everyone. And that brings me to today's craft. Today, you are going to make your very own little straw hat. The craft kits are down on the porch and they are just waiting for you. This is made out of a paper plate, a bowl, some ribbon, some strips of paper to make your straw. There are some flowers to adorn it and a few feathers. So I'm really excited to see the hat that you make. Now there are lots of different kinds of hats. The hat I'm wearing, I don't know what you would call it, maybe a fedora, but there are hats for really cold weather, like this one. That keeps your hat, your head warm and your ears warm with the ear flaps and either can clip under my chin or there's a fun straw hat for when I work out in the garden. And then there's a fancy hat, the kind worn by a queen. And then a baseball cap to keep the sun out of my eyes. I bet a lot of you have baseball caps. Maybe yours has your favorite team on it. There's even hats that you would wear in the shower. It's called a shower cap. And then you have hats for special occasions. I like to wear this one on St. Patrick's Day. It's a fancy sparkly hat. Or as my grandmother would call it, a Sunday hat, fancy with a fun little flower. What kind of hats do you have around your house and what kind of hats do you like to wear? So I'm gonna put my favorite hat back on and read you another story. This book is called, Do You Have a Hat? 
and I'm sure that you do. It'll be interesting to hear what kind of hat you have. Do you have a hat written by Eileen Spinelli and illustrated by Geraldo Valerio? Do you have a hat? Something fuzzy, warm, and red to keep the snowflakes off your head? Or maybe a floppy brimmed in blue when the summer sun shines down on you? Do you have a hat? Francisco de Goya had a hat, a hat with candles on the brim, a clever hat that suited him, that made a chandelier of light for painting far into the night. Do you have a hat? Igor Stravinsky had a hat, a tattered, battered green beret. He wore it every single day. They said it never left his head, not even when he went to bed. Do you have a hat? Carmen Miranda had a hat, a towering hat of plums and cherries, peaches, oranges, and berries, plump bananas by the bunch, a hat her friends could eat for lunch. Do you have a hat? Abraham Lincoln had a hat, a stovepipe hat, black and tall, a presidential carry-all. Abe Lincoln wore it round the town with documents inside the crown. Nat Love had a hat, a cowboy hat to wear, of course, or carry water to his horse to give a pesky fly slap or play the pillow for his nap. Do you have a hat? Isabel of Bavaria had a hat, a cone-shaped high, cone-shaped hat so very high, it poked a gargoyle in the eye. The doorways had to be redone so she could fit through everyone. Do you have a hat? Walt Whitman had a hat, a rather old and shabby hat, at times a makeshift table hat for writing poems in the sun, for eating supper on the run. Do you have a hat? Can you see his hat right in his lap? Louis Camay had a hat, a hat to close his magic act, a normal looking hat, in fact, but reaching in as was his habit, Louis produced a bunny rabbit. Johnny Chapman had a hat. They say he wore a cooking pot. Some folks believe that, some do not. If true, he was a sight indeed, a pot top sower of apple seed. Amelia Earhart had a hat. So did Daniel Boone, it's true. Charlie Chaplin, Sally Ride, all of them had hats. Do you? Do you have a hat? A fancy hat? A hat that's plain? A hat for walking in the rain? A hat with feathers, flowers, bows? A hat that hoots? A hat that glows? A magic hat? A cap? A crown? A country hat? A hat for town? A single hat squash flat or tall? is better than no hat at all. So what kind of hats could you find around the house? Or maybe you could just put something on your head like a pot, like Johnny Chapman, or as we know him, Johnny Appleseed did. Now, I have a silly song about a hat. And places you might put a hat, and places you probably don't. On my head, I wear a hat. It is such a silly hat that my head will wiggle waggle to and fro. Where else can my silly hat go? On my foot, I have a hat. It is such a silly hat that my head will wiggle waggle to and fro. Where else can my silly hat go? On my elbow, I have a hat. It is such a silly hat that my elbow will wiggle waggle to and fro. Where else can my silly hat go? On my knee, I ha wear my hat. It is such a silly hat that my knee will wiggle waggle to and fro. Where else can my silly hat go? 
So I'm going to put my silly hat back on my head for one more story today. So this story is called, You Must Bring a Hat. Have you ever gone someplace that required something specific to bring? Maybe you went to a birthday party and they wanted you to bring, I don't know, maybe it was a themed birthday party and they wanted you to bring a teacup or a teddy bear. So at this party, you must bring a hat by Simon Phillip and Kate Hindley. I received an invitation to a party. You were cordially invited to the biggest, bestest, hattiest party of all time. Starts at 5.30 p.m. Wide Brim House, 32 Panama Avenue, West Tribbling. You may bring as many extra guests as you wish, but you must bring a hat. Kindest regards, Nigel, host and fanciest hat judge. P.S. Seriously, don't forget the hat. The party depends on it. P.P.S. Try not to be late this time. Immediately, I panicked. I don't own a hat. And the invitation specifically stated that I must bring a hat. The party depended on it. I searched everywhere for a hat. Peddler's Finest Hats sold out. But the only hat I could find belonged to a monkey. That's a lovely hat. May I borrow it, please? No. I really, really need a hat for a party. I'll give it back. Since he wouldn't negotiate, I was left with no choice. At least I had a hat, even if it was still attached to a monkey. But on arrival, security was pretty tight. Invitation, please, said the doorman. Apparently there are other rules, too. Sorry, sir, but we're under strict instructions not to let in any hat-wearing monkeys. Unless they are also wearing a monocle. Luckily, we soon bumped into a badger named Jeff. He was just the sort of badger we required. I, I do beg your pardon, chaps. But by any, are you by any chance after a monocle? Indeed! We are. We need it for a party. I will lend this monkey my monocle on one condition. That I may accompany you to the shindig. Invitation, please, the doorman said again. Sorry, sir, but we're under strict instructions not to let in any hat and monocle wearing monkeys if they're accompanied by a badger named Jeff. Unless Jeff can play the piano. Can you play the piano? I asked. Don't insult me. I'm a badger. Of course I can. Jeff can play, I said firmly. I'm afraid we're going to need to see that, the doorman replied. So here's Terrence T. Trunks' P professional piano removal. Jeff was great on the piano. But we still had a problem. Sorry, sir, but we can't let it, this piano lending elephant in. He's not wearing a tutu. Just my luck! There's never a tutu around when you need one. That seems like a big problem. We solved that problem surprisingly quickly. Surely now we would be let in. But we'd failed to notice the sign. Under no circumstances is a tutu to be worn without the supervision of an accompanied penguin. Oh, look. Ah! But there's a penguin. Martin kindly helped us out. And as he was very clever penguin, he was already prepared for the next rule. All accompanying penguins... Pink t all penguins accompanying two pink tutu-wearing elephants must bring with them a suitcase full of cheese. But Martin's got the cheese. But it turned out the cheese needed to be sliced. And none of us had thought to bring a knife. And that was when I'd had enough! 
Look, these are the silliest rules I've ever heard. Nigel clearly stated on his invitation that I could bring anyone I wanted. So long as I had brought a hat. And I brought a monkey in a hat. So technically, I brought a hat and... Nigel, said the doorman. Who's Nigel? This is Felicity's party. This is at number 32. Next door. Oops. See, it says happy birthday, Nigel. Right next door. Still... Nigel's party was worth the hassle. Look at all those cool different hats they're wearing. Even if we were still a little late. Now, I have one more fun poem for you. It is written by one of my favorite poets, Shel Silverstein. And it's from his poetry book, A Light in the Attic. And this is a silly poem about a man, man with lots of hats and a man who only has one. Mr. Smets and Mr. Spats. Mr. Spats had 21 hats and none of them were the same. And Mr. Smeds had 21 heads, but only one hat to his name. Now, when Mr. Smeds and Mr. Spats, they talked of buying and selling of hats, Mr. Spats bought Mr. Smeds' hat. Did you ever hear of anything crazier than that? You would have thought Mr. Smeds, with all his heads, would have bought Mr. Spats' hat, but not so much. So these three books are just a sampling of the hat stories that we have in the library. We also have a collection of hat stories by John Clayson. We found a hat. This is not my hat. And I want my hat. In addition to that, we have A Good Day for a Hat by T. Nat Fuller. And the classic The Hat by John Brett. So when you come down to pick up your craft so that you can make your very own straw cap, Come check out some of our collection of hat books. I hope you guys had fun today. I know I certainly did, but it's time for me to go. So I'd like to say, so long now, till next time. See you later, alligator in a wild crocodile. Have a good day. Bye-bye.